Look at what Justin Trudeau posted on Twitter two days ago. He wrote, social media platforms must be held accountable for the hate speech and disinformation we see online. And if they don't step up, there will be consequences. We launched Canada's new digital charter today to guide our decisions. Learn more about it here. And, and there was a video that was attached to the tweet. Here's, here's what it looked like. The platforms are failing their users and they're failing our citizens. They have to step up in a major way to counter disinformation. And if they don't, we will hold them to account and there will be meaningful financial consequences. Hate. Well, that's a human emotion. Trudeau hates plenty of things. He sure hates Jody Wilson-Raybould. Oh my God, does he hate Mark Norman? He tried to throw him in prison. Justin Trudeau hates criticism. He's so thin-skinned. But when he says hate speech, he really means speech that he hates, people that he hates. He wants to get rid of the things that he hates. And he doesn't like disinformation, I guess. And we know what that means. Like when the Globe and Mail broke the huge story about Jody Wilson-Raybould and SNC-Lavalin, Trudeau said that was disinformation. The allegations in the Globe story this morning are false. Uh, neither the current nor the previous Attorney General uh, was ever directed by me or by anyone in my office. So his news about punishing disinformation and things that he hates, that's what Trudeau said two days ago. I'll, I'll get into that digital charter in a moment. So that's the stick, that's the censorship, that's the punishment of journalists he doesn't like, that's the threat. But there's a carrot too, a reward, and that came yesterday. Federal government names organizations that will help spend $660 million journalism fund, said the state broadcaster, the CBC. Now, just last November, that number was $595 million. They haven't even started spending this money yet, and it's already ballooned to $660 million. That's Trudeau for you, isn't it? It's pretty clear. Do what Trudeau says, and you'll get free money. Embarrass Trudeau. Do something he hates. Say something he disagrees with and that he'll call false, and you'll be punished financially. He was very clear on that, wasn't he? That's our story for today, but it's really going to be the story for every day for the next five months until the election. Justin Trudeau is down in the polls by about a dozen points. The latest poll showed his personal popularity at 31%. A poll just a day earlier put him at 28%. That's barely half of Trump's popularity. Trudeau's liberal candidate came in fourth in a by-election in Nanaimo, B.C., with just 11% of the vote there. There are new scandals every week, including the shocking story of how Trudeau tried to wrongfully convict this innocent man, Vice Admiral Mark Norman, because he blew the whistle on Trudeau's scheme to divert a shipbuilding contract to Trudeau's liberal buddies. I went to the press conference of Vice Admiral Norman the day the charges were dropped against him, and I observed what I call the media party, all the big shots from all the big media on Parliament Hill. Six months ago, they were all in love with Justin Trudeau. They usually ignored his gaffes or downplayed them. They were even willing to turn a blind eye to his sexual assault of Rose Knight, the reporter in Creston, B.C. Here's what he said. Like I said, uh, I do not feel that I acted inappropriately uh, in any way, uh, but I respect uh, the fact that someone else might have experienced that differently. Until six months ago or so, all the media party were still buying those lines, but I think it's broken apart now. I think this cover story, Mike McLean's, says it all. The media are disillusioned. They feel like Trudeau tricked them. They're calling him an imposter now. So how can he win this fall? On the carbon tax by having old Yeller shout at us a bit? So let's talk about climate change for a second. Who believes it's real? <laughs> Who believes it's science? We got a report last year that said we have 12 years to take serious climate action. We are all in this together. We need to act. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to do it. And let me add one more fact. Remember a week or so ago when I showed you a leaked survey of Liberal MPs from Ontario? 
where those Liberal MPs ranked the issues they'd like to campaign on in the fall. They really wanted to stop talking about global warming and the carbon tax. They know how much Canadians hate Old Yeller. Uh, I'm sure they're feeling even more that way after watching the Australian Labour Party, which went all in on global warming and carbon taxes. Well, they lost an election last week that all the pollsters promised they'd win. But the one fact in that leaked Liberal memo um, that stood out to me was that the number one issue that voters spontaneously were bringing up to Liberal MPs was that of immigration and refugees. Unprompted is what I mean. I truly don't think anyone unprompted says, I'm really worried about carbon dioxide in the air, and I think paying a carbon tax is not a, it's not a normal thing for humans to say, especially since we exhale carbon dioxide when we breathe. That, that's, just, that's just not an issue, but immigration is the number one issue. What makes me laugh is that the CBC claimed they couldn't figure out if that meant Canadians were spontaneously walking up to Liberal MPs to compliment them on immigration or to criticize them. Yeah, spoiler alert. Um, it was to criticize. Last fall, only 6% of Canadians told Angus Reid that they wanted more immigration. As you can see, uh, that's the dark blue line. The red blue line, the, uh, the dark red line is 49% want less immigration. Well, Trudeau and angry Ahmed Hassan went ahead and raised immigration levels nonetheless. So yeah, I'm guessing it's not praise. So what are they doing? How are the Liberals going to win? Well, they're doing what they always do. They demonize, they divide, they insult. Mr. Sunny Ways, he's long gone. I mean, he's still trying it sometimes, but only on foreign audiences. This is Trudeau at some United Nations thing. That's his base now, foreign bureaucrats and diplomats and low information journalists who are still wowed by how woke he is because they haven't been disillusioned yet like the Canadian media party. Just watch this clip again. I think I showed it the other day. This kind of bluster worked in Canada in 2015? Not anymore. It, he's he's got to take it on the road to foreign audiences to get applause for this. Well, I'm going to keep saying loud and clearly that I am a feminist uh, <laughs> until... Hear me roar. Until it is met with a shrug. Uh, why does every time I say I'm a feminist, uh, you know, the Twitterverse explodes and uh, news media pick, pick it up, it shouldn't be something uh, that creates a reaction. It simply is saying, I believe in the equality of men and women and I believe that we still have an awful lot of work to do to get there. That's like saying the sky is blue and the grass is green. Yeah, I don't think those oily lies work anymore in Canada. So they've changed tack. Uh, the Liberals are now claiming that the Conservatives will ban abortion in Canada if they're elected. Now Stephen Harper didn't even allow a real debate on abortion during his nine years as Prime Minister, let alone a vote. So yeah, not sure if that fear mongering is going to work, but it'll work on some. They're going full tilt on calling their opponents neo-Nazis and white supremacists. The media party actually really likes that one. Uh, well, I absolutely do think uh, that white supremacists, white supremacist movements are a very real, a very grave threat uh, to Western liberal democracy. I think they are a grave and real threat here in Canada, and they are a grave threat in many other countries around the world. Uh, and now let me bring this all around to the news of the day. You've got a liberal party that's so low in the polls it's coming in fourth in by-elections. When the economy is still positive enough, when the Liberal government is still in its first term, they're coming in fourth. It's not supposed to work that way. The media party is now actually, maybe grudgingly, reporting on things they would have ignored just six months ago. Aboriginal protesters, for example, they're no longer ignored by the media. Remember this? I stand here, I honor my ancestors and my children by protecting my lands and waters. Thank you. You threaten our lands and waters. You're uh, right? I have heard, bring that I have our heard waters. some fellow Those leaders of yours. Highways. You have, have no heard, right to do that to us. Sir, I, to I have heard from some of your fellow indigenous leaders. I've heard from some of your fellow indigenous leaders who are in favor of resource development, who want to be partners. Why don't you sit down with my people? Why don't you talk to them? You talk to everybody that wants to sign off on this? No, I've They have no resources. They can't hunt no more. They can't Will, do this. I've heard you. I hear you today. I understand your concern. You're a weak leader. Okay, you're being you're being you're You've made your point. Thank you, sir. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. If you're going to, if you're going to uh, participate, and let us continue. If not, 
Have a good day, and please give everyone outside my best. Their voices are really important as we approach this next election. That was just yesterday, I think. He's still got that sneering sound. He say hi to your friends outside. It's like his thanks for your donation comment. Uh, he made it that ritzy fundraiser about a month ago. One last example. This guy would have been pilloried by the media a few years ago. Uh, now it's presented, at the very least, neutrally. Look at this heckler. Do you know how long you've held up people picking up bags? I've been waiting Sorry. to lie down oh, the road oh, no, for, for 30 minutes while you've been here soaking up the race. Thank you. You know? Excuse me. Excuse me. You're not getting my voice. This is a free country. It is a free country. It's a free country, country and I'm trying to speak to him, and he won't even acknowledge me. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry for your challenge. Well, it's not my challenge. I'm a volunteer trying okay. to help someone okay. save their home. Sir, sir, we've been filling sandbags as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I just and you know why you're here? Yes, while I'm you're here, here nobody sorry. can pick up. I am here while you're because... here, no one can pick I up don't know sand. That, sir. I'm sorry. Well, why don't you make yourself aware? Yeah, I, I think the, the coverage of that clip was neutral at best for Trudeau, whereas a year ago they would have called him an angry white guy heckling our woke prime minister. Things have changed. So I think the Liberals are into a campaign of demonizing their opponents, name-calling. But that's probably not really enough, is it? I mean, it didn't win it for Rachel Notley in Alberta last month, didn't win it for Kathleen Wynne against Rob Ford. So an authoritarian bully like Justin Trudeau, thin-skinned, vain, a narcissist, unused to criticism, used to being insulated from things his whole life, he's got a bit of an enemies list. He's shown that. He's shown that he hates people, for example. I mean, he, he hates us. He hates us here at the Rebel. He and Ahmed Hassan, his immigration minister, have literally used the same word-for-word -word talking points about us here at the Rebel because we're not with the official narrative. Remember this? We've shown you this before. It is disappointing to see the Conservatives and uh, Max, uh, the, the, mem the member opposite <laughs> engage in peddling uh, Rebel media conspiracy uh, theories. It is disappointing to see the Conservatives engage in peddling rebel media conspiracy theories. It is disappointing to see the Conservatives engage in peddling rebel media conspiracy uh, theories. Now remember, uh, that's the exact issue that the Liberal MPs in Ontario said was the number one thing that voters were asking them about, Im immigration. And Ahmed Hassan and Justin Trudeau were furious that we were talking about as journalists. Illegal immigration, people are fed up with illegal immigration. Immigration that mocks our laws, as you can see these folks illegally crossing in from the United States, sure. But legal immigration is upsetting people too. That's what that Angus Reid poll showing 6% was about. It said there's too many people even coming in legally, so put it all together. All right, put it all together. You got panicky Justin Trudeau. His sunny ways image is dashed. His feminism talking points are, are a laugh now. His conceit that he's some great white giver who will heal problems with Canada's Aboriginal peoples, yeah, that's off, they hate him. So the plan seems to be buy off the media and shut off the media. Buy off those who can be bought. And given the perilous finances of Sony Legacy Media, that's most of them and shut off the rest of the media, especially social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, the citizen media. Bribes and punishments, carrots and sticks. I've been warning about Justin Trudeau's plans to censor the internet for years. We've seen strands of it. We've seen hints of it. About 18 months ago, what I consider to be a shocking story was published in, of all places, the Toronto Star. It was a threat from Justin Trudeau to the number two executive of Facebook, their chief operating officer, a billionaire named Sheryl Sandberg. Trudeau threatened her if she didn't censor political content in Canada that he, Justin Trudeau, didn't like in advance of his re-election. He was very specific about that. He would force Facebook to, to do it through government regulations. What was interesting about this was that the threat was obviously made face to face when Trudeau met with Sandberg, and it was obviously done in, in private. But someone in Trudeau's office later felt the need to leak it to the Toronto Star, who dutifully published it. I'm not sure why that threat was leaked. Maybe the message wasn't getting the through. Maybe Sandberg ignored Justin Trudeau, as so many important people in the world ignore Trudeau or mock Trudeau. Trudeau doesn't seem to do well with powerful women. 
maybe that's it. I mean, he doesn't know how to handle powerful women who disagree with him. Ask Jody wilson Rabel or Jane Philpott. It was odd, though, because Justin Trudeau already has his key man embedded in Facebook, this guy. They're head of policy in Canada, which means they're head of censorship. His name is Kevin Chan. Kevin Chan used to be a senior staffer in the Liberal Party of Canada. So this is an inside job. Trudeau can just outsource his censorship to Facebook. He doesn't have to get his own hands dirty, at least not in public. It looked like Facebook might have been pushing back a bit. So he had to threaten them in the Toronto Star. That's how I explained that story. I think that story in the Star was probably the most important story of 2018, at least in regards to free speech, the internet and the upcoming election. But I have not seen this story referred to anywhere else. I give the Star credit for running it, though I think they were running it as a favor to Trudeau to pass on a threat to, to Facebook. But I saw re no reply to the story from Reporters Without Borders or the Canadian Civil Liberties Association or the Canadian Association of Journalists, or Pan Canada, all these free speech groups, nothing. Because they're not really civil libertarians anymore. They're not really for free speech anymore. They're for free speech, but. You know what I mean? Free speech, but. Here, I'll let Salman Rushdie explain the difference. I've got so sick of the goddamn but brigade. And now, the moment somebody says, yes, I believe in free speech, but, I stop listening. Mm. No. You know, I believe in free speech, but people should behave themselves. I believe in free speech, but we shouldn't upset anybody. I believe in free speech, but let's not go too far. The point about it is the moment you limit free speech, it's not free speech. The point about it is that it's free. Yeah, he's exactly right. So, so why wouldn't Trudeau move against his enemies? That Toronto Star article was like a trial balloon, you could say, and it elicited, it elicited precisely no reaction other than maybe from us here at The Rebel. So, so let's look at what's coming now. I showed you a glimpse of this last week when Trudeau flew to Paris to meet with New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, who is clearly in some sort of post-traumatic stress from the mass shooting on the mosque in Christchurch, and, and fair enough, but she's been traumatized and she's just banning everything. She's lashing out. I think she's gone a bit mad, banning guns, banning free speech, banning things on the internet. I don't know if it's just the psychological stress of what happened or if it was a long-standing desire on her part, but she is literally doing what the terrorist himself said he hoped would happen, provoking massive change in public policy through his violence. That's not good. Now, in a sense, other than the five million souls who live in New Zealand. It's a great little country. It's our, they're our friends and our allies, but it's smaller in population than Toronto. And it's, it's so far away. But it's our problem in that her overreaction, her censorship, is being exported around the world with the cooperation of tech companies themselves who co-sponsored this censorship mission by her. That's the creepy part. They're all in on it. So Trudeau was all aboard that censorship. And this week he brought in his own censorship. That's that digital charter uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the show. I know what the charter is, the charter of rights and freedom. Uh, that's what Trudeau's dad, Pierre Trudeau, introduced um, a generation ago. Can I read section two of the charter of rights and freedoms for you? I bet you a dollar that Justin Trudeau couldn't tell you what section two of the charter of rights and freedom says. Let me read it for you. Fundamental freedom. Two, everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. Freedom of peaceful assembly and freedom of association. There are other freedoms in the charter, but these ones are so important, they're called fundamental freedoms. They have their own section first. They're what the other freedoms sort of depend on. Freedom of thought, belief, opinion, expression, the press, the media. That's real constitutional talk. That's a charter. That's a charter. Uh, Justin Trudeau stole the word charter for his digital charter, but as in so many other ways, he's just a cheap copy of his dad. It's a joke, really. He's undermining freedom. Here's the digital charter page that he mentioned in that tweet. Now, just scroll down here. So much of this is buzzwords and gobbledygook from clueless politicians and bureaucrats and lobbyists and scammers who have no idea what they're doing. 
but they love to mail. Look at this chart, for example. I don't know if you can see that in gray there. Current waves, future waves, new ecosystems. Who, who talks like that? Trudeau the fool trying to sound smart. That's who. We have to realize that the way of thinking that got us to this place no longer holds. We have to rethink elements as basic as space and time to go all science fiction-y on you in this sense. Whenever I watch that clip, I come out five IQ points dumber. I mean, let me show you some more of this digital chart. I mean, come on, look at this. Look, you see that there? Uh, super cluster initiative. You see that there in black? <laughs> look at this. Digital engagement lead. Hey guys, here's your digital engagement leaders for your digital charter. Sorry, that's not a thing. That's, that's just not a thing. That's a fake way to milk a stupid government with huge consulting contracts. Hey, we're digital engagement specialists. And, and look at the bizarre identity politics here. What women said, what young people said, what immigrants said, what gay black people in wheelchairs said. What a bizarre way of thinking, putting Canadians into boxes as if all women or all Aboriginal people think the same way. What a moron we have as a prime minister. And look at this bizarre graphic. This is in the digital charter. It looks like some weird cult thing drawn by someone on drugs, which it probably was. Just 20 pounds of stupid stuffed into a 10 pound bag. Look at that. Are those doodles? Is that a, is that a doodle? Justin Trudeau, it, did you doodle that? Mr. Prime Minister, you're asking us to take your doodle and call it a digital chart. I wonder if the whole thing is just like a giant practical joke. I think this might be like what it is inside Trudeau's mind, along with lots and lots of pot smoke. It's all baffle gab like this. Makes no sense, but it gets government money. But if you scroll all the way down this document, buried under tons of manure, you get to the hidden point of it. Do you see this? It says principles. And you see down near the bottom, number eight, strong democracy. Number nine, free from hate and violent extremism. Number 10, strong enforcement and real accountability. These are not clickable, even though it's on a website. You can't click on them because... It's, it's, I, I read through this whole pile of junk for you, and I think I found the needle in the haystack. It's really just an excerpt from that New Zealand censorship plan. Look at this. I'm going to read the whole passage because it's just very small in this mountain of manure. Governments and major online service providers have made voluntary collective commitments to prevent people from abusing the Internet for violent extremist and terrorist purposes. These commitments include increasing transparency and accountability in expressing community standards, terms of service, and content moderation on the part of online service providers, building more inclusive, resilient communities to counter violent radicalization, enforcing laws that stop the production and dissemination of terrorist and extremist content online, and encouraging media to apply ethical rules when reporting on terrorist events to avoid amplifying violent extremist and terrorist content. Okay, so let's just go through that a little bit, okay? Major online service providers uh, have made voluntary collective commitments. So it's past tense. They have made those commitments. So it's, it's done. Did you know that? Did, did you know that that's already done? Did that happen at that New Zealand cult meeting? I, I think it did because there was no public debate. What, what exactly are those commitments? Can, can we get a copy of those commitments? Journalists weren't allowed into those meetings. What was said? When a government meets with a business and the business leaves by making some sort of voluntary promise, it's not voluntary. It's either based on some sort of threat, like the threat Trudeau made to Facebook last year, or some sort of, you know, stick or a carrot, some, some promise, some contract or something. What were these promises? What were these threats? What were these commitments? Uh, it says to prevent people from abusing the internet. So something new that these companies weren't doing before. They, they, they were weeding out terrorism before, or they were trying to. So what's new now? They're just going to try harder now? Or more likely, they're going to expand the definition of what they call terrorism and extremism and make it apply to Trudeau's personal enemies list, like Trudeau told Sheryl Sandberg 18 months ago. 
Which of these do you think it means, and why don't we know? We're given an outline, new community standards. Is that the new rules that caused, say, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, a very popular mainstream conservative commentator, to be banned from Facebook? Paul Joseph Watson is about as violent as a little lamb, so what was the new rule that had him banned? Was it Justin Trudeau who called for him to be banned? Was it his own Prime Minister, Theresa May, over there in the UK? Who in this secret meeting asked for what? Content moderation. Does that mean silencing voices that criticize Trudeau? Why, why would the government have a hand in that? What's that got to do with terrorism? In fact, isn't the point of media to hold governments to account? Why does the government hold media to account? And, and why were the media companies compelled to go along with it? And ethical rules for reporting, whose ethics? <laughs> Justin Trudeau's? He said that the report about his corruption and SNC-Lavalin and Jody Wilson-Raybould, he said it was untrue. He said that was unethical reporting. Turns out he was the unethical liar. Would his new rules have shut down that report about him? The secrecy here, the secret meetings, the secret deals, that's pretty much the opposite of what the Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees. Where are my rights? That's what a charter is. My rights is against the state. Where are my digital rights in this digital charter? All I see is a bunch of baffle gab from consultants, a bunch of weird doodles, and then the censorship hammer buried in the manure. Oh well, hi-ho. I didn't see any stories about that, did you? Not in the mainstream media. Tell me if I missed one. Uh, and not actually from the conservative opposition. Did you see Andrew Scheer or his critics take aim at it at all? They didn't. I wonder if they would like to have these powers too. Most governments do. Now, in terms of the media, um, maybe the silence of the lambs is, is the it has to do with the second part of my story, the big payoff. Who's watching the watchman is an old saying. Well, when the watchman pocket a $660 million bribe from the people they're supposed to be watching, maybe it turns out no one's watching them. Let me read to you my least favorite part about all this. I mean, if you take money from Justin Trudeau, you are owned by Justin Trudeau, or at least rented by him. That's pretty much a law of nature. Look at the CBC state broadcaster if you need proof. This is the de facto nationalization of the rest of the Canadian media, or at least those willing to rent themselves out by the hour. Uh, the federal government, I'm quoting from the state broadcaster, the federal government has named the eight Canadian organizations that will sit on a special advisory panel tasked with recommending news operations for participation in a $600 million media support fund. Is it 660 million, as the headline said, or 600 million, as this, who knows? But let, let me read the, friend of, the friends of Justin Trudeau who will purse out this $600 million. Let me quote. The eight associations that have been asked to select a representative to sit on the independent panel by the middle of June are News Media Canada, the Association de la Presse Francophone, the Quebec Community Newspaper Association, the National Ethnic Press and Media Council of Canada, and the Canadian Association of Journalists, the Fédération Professionnelle des Journalistes de Québec, UNIFOR, and the Fédération Nationale des Communications. Sorry for my awful French. So they're all lobbyists, really. News Media Canada, Newspaper Association, they're all lobbyists. They'll divide up the pie. Huge disproportion from Quebec. I mean, of course. I mean, Quebecers are better. Quebecers are better than the rest of Canada because, you know, we're Quebecers. But seriously, what did you think a corrupt liberal from Quebec would do? But look at that one, that one I mentioned, Unifor. Unifor, run by this guy, Jerry Diaz. Unifor, the union that publicly declared it was going to war against Andrew Scheer and the Conservatives and they were going to be their worst nightmare. Unifor, that's taking huge amounts of their own members' union dues and using it to campaign against the Conservatives, just like they did in 2015. So in case you had any doubt, yeah, no, this is a liberal media campaign fund. Justin's journos, let's call it. So let's recap. $600 million, or is it 660? for Trudeau's friends, but he won't choose them, people. No, 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 no. This is, this is independent. The CBC just said so. It's just Trudeau's close partisan ally, Jerry Diaz, the uniform boss. He'll, he'll choose who gets the money. Champagne for my real friends. 
Real pain from a sham, friends. That's his motto. Uh, censorship through voluntary private agreements with internet companies like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. It was voluntary, people. Uh, we just couldn't show you how the deal was made. What's in those agreements? Don't you worry your pretty little head. I mean, you can trust Justin Trudeau, right? That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day, I do a video monologue, and then I interview an interesting guest, and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.